Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a Zotac ZBox CI660 Nano, which is a relatively small fanless computer. It's a little bit larger than some of Zotac's previous fanless devices, and that's because it's also a little bit more powerful. You can see it doesn't have a fan inside the case, so it has this ventilation on pretty much every side, the top, bottom, back, and sides. And when I say it's a little bit more powerful than previous versions, that's because it has a 15-watt quad-core processor, an Intel Core i7-855U, CPU in this particular model, which Zotac loaned me. When Zotac asked if I wanted to review this, I said, sure, because I do some things where a fanless computer would come in handy, particularly recording and editing audio. So there's no fan, and if you use this with a solid state drive instead of a hard drive, there's really nothing that's gonna make any noise from the computer itself. So you can record with a microphone right next to it and not have to worry about getting that sort of whooshing sound from a fan, or you can listen to audio without worrying about the distraction of having a fan in the background. Uh, it could also be used for media centers, it could be used for digital signage, it could be used for all sorts of situations where you just don't want a fan making noise. And it's also one less thing to break. Uh, so you don't have to worry that there's something that's gonna, you know, performance is gonna be affected when that stops working. So like I said, Zotac sent me this version uh, as a loaner so I could review it and I opened it up, started to try to put some memory and storage in it because it is a bare bone system and realized I didn't have any DDR4 memory. I only have DDR3. So Patriot was nice enough to send me some memory that I could test in it. They sent me 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and you can see this is sort of laptop style, or laptop size uh, SODIMS. So I'm gonna put that in there. And they also sent along a 240 gigabyte, uh, 2.5 inch solid state drive. This is SATA 3, 6 GBPS. So depending on what you put in there, your performance might vary, but these are the components I'm gonna be testing it with. Um, I'll also try loading Windows 10 and maybe uh, some Linux. In terms of actually putting the hardware in, it's pretty easy. So there's these little screws here on the bottom that also work as sort of stands. So they prop it up so there's a little bit of space between the bottom and your desk or tabletop. And it also allows you to open up the case without a screwdriver. Although it's a little tricky without getting in the way of the camera here, but if I can get my fingers in the right spot here, I should be able to open this up without breaking anything. There we go. So you can see we've got, again, everything passively cooled here. And when we take a look inside, that is I believe the wireless card. Storage goes here, memory goes here. So let's go ahead and pop in some memory. That's easy enough. Let's grab a second one. seated in there properly. There we go. And this we're going to need a screwdriver to attach firmly. So I'm going to take off this plate. attach this using two screws. And you can see that it connects right here, so we can slide it into place. and then that should line up so we can put the screws back in. So again, I want to thank both Zotac for sending me this loaner of the bare bones computer and also Patriot for sending along memory and storage. I did actually have an SSD that I was going to test, but this one's a little bit larger, so it should give me ample space 
to do some audio editing and general performance tests. And that's pretty much all you need the screwdriver for. So the last thing you do is see where you find the little arrows. Make sure that they're lined up here properly. Slide it into place. Click it closed. And then put the screws back on. Now there's nothing on this SSD, so the first time I load it up, I'm going to need to insert a flash drive and boot from the flash drive to load an operating system. But basically, I've got a fully functional computer at this point. After I've run some tests, I'll go ahead and post another video showing a little bit more about performance, but before we do that, let's just take a quick look at what you get here. So there's a connector for an external antenna that's adjustable here, power adapter, lock, uh, HDMI and display port, dual uh, Ethernet jacks, uh, four USB 3.0 ports, and on the front we've got another USB port, two USB Type-C ports, separate mic and headphone jacks, an SD card slot, and the power button. So it's a pretty decent array of input and output options here, um, including support for multiple monitors, and you might be able to support up to three, I would imagine, if you wanted to use one of those USB ports as well. Power supply is relatively small, so the hardware that's inside this thing is pretty close to what you would get on a relatively recent laptop with a quad-core Intel processor. Uh, it's not going to be necessarily as powerful as, say, a high-end gaming rig, but you get high-end or decent, you know, upper-mid-range level laptop performance in a completely fanless desktop-style case. So um, it's not surprising that you get a kind of laptop-sized power brick here. The uh, USB Type-C ports, I'm just checking the specifications here. It does say that they're USB 3.1, which means that they should be able to handle display output, but they're not Thunderbolt 3. They're not going to be 40 uh, GPPS. They're going to be a little bit less powerful than that. And that, I think, is most of what I can tell you without having actually turned this thing on yet. So uh, the Ethernet ports are gigabit Ethernet ports and... is said to support up to 4K 60 hertz displays. Yeah, 10 GBPS for the USB Type-C ports. So that's a quick look at the Zotac uh, Zbox CI660 Nano and how you install and set up the memory and storage. Now all I have to do is plug it in, load an operating system, and start using it. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.